Hello and welcome to the Fabulous Guide to Nythendra in the Emerald Nightmare. Yes, the tier has finally begun and we get to kick it off by fighting a corrupted dragon as the first boss. Now this two-phase encounter is pretty much all to do with reacting quickly with different types of debuffs and positioning. So let's kick straight into it and talk about one of her main position-based mechanics, which is called Rot. This is a debuff applied to a couple of members of your raid, which will cause them to do damage to themselves and anyone within eight yards every three seconds. Now you need to be pre-spread out for when this ability comes in as it will instantly pulse out damage upon application. So if you're all stacked on top of each other and you have a 30 man raid and five of them come in at once, that's going to be so much unnecessary damage and your healers are absolutely going to hate you. Now once the debuff expires, it will also leave a large patch of goo on the ground called infested ground. Now this goo just deals a large amount of ticking damage to anyone stood in it, but it does play a very important role in the second phase. What you want to do is place this infested ground away and behind the raid at the edges of the room. This doesn't only free up space, but it will help with positioning in phase two, which we'll get to in a moment. So just to recap those points that Alex just made, Make sure you're spread on one side of the boss very, very loosely. Make sure that when the rocks come in, you move them to the side of the room. You probably want your healers to spot heal these targets. Make sure you're in range, drop the debuff off, and then run back towards the boss. Now, for tanks, you also have your own rot debuff to deal with. However, this one works slightly differently. After 8 seconds, when it expires, you'll do a massive amount of damage to the raid. However, the further away you are from players, the less damage they'll take. So what you need to do as soon as the debuff is applied to you, you need your other tank to taunt and you just need to run as far away from the boss as possible. The way that we do it is that we just put on the direct opposite side of the room in comparison to the raid, so if the raid's on the right hand side of the room, we have our tank run all the way over to the left. Also do note when your debuff expires, try and be up against a wall because you will be leaving a puddle of shit on the ground. Now on a timer, twice per phase one, the boss will cast something called Infested Breath. This is just a frontal cone ability that is targeted at a random player in the raid and all it is is just a massive fucking breath that deals a huge amount of damage and if you are hit by it, you'll also leave these rotty infested puddles on the ground which just makes things super chaotic when it comes down to phase 2. This breath since the PTR actually has an extended duration so it takes far longer for the boss to ramp up and actually send it at your face. So even though you're now spread out in comparison to what maybe you was thinking about using before you came to this boss, it doesn't matter anymore. You can easily run to either side of the boss. You have so much time to move. Basically, look out for the breath. When it comes in, move away from it. Never get hit by it. It's super, super easy to do now because the cost is just that much longer. And that's all you need to really know in terms of how the mechanics work for phase one on normal mode at least. On heroic mode, you'll notice that everyone is getting stacking debuffs. Now these debuffs are applied to you every time you take damage from one of the abilities of the encounter, whether that's the explosion from the tank, which of course is unavoidable, damage from the rots, which of course is avoidable to everyone that doesn't have the rot debuff, and of course the breath, which is also avoidable. But ultimately you are always going to get these debuffs and all they do is just ticking damage and they stack up and up and up every time you take damage from any of those things I just listed. And under 10 stacks, it doesn't do much, but it's very easy to get multiple stacks, especially if you was unlucky and you was targeted by rots multiple times. So it is incredibly important that you do stay spread just to reduce the amount of these stacks that are going out in the raid. It will make your healer's job far, far easier. And this, in hindsight, is actually quite difficult to do, especially when it comes down to a very large raid size. So we have a couple of pointers and a couple of things that you should keep in mind when positioning on this boss, just to minimize the amount of infested stacks you get. We found that the best strategy is to cut the room into three areas. You always want to tank Nythendra in the middle of the room, with the raid stacked up on one side of her, inside one of these thirds. Each time the rot comes in, make sure you're already pre-spread, and make sure that the rots time out at the edges of the room. Each time the tank rot debuff comes in, he needs to place it on the opposite side like we've already said. And each time the breath comes in, make sure the entire raid just does their best to avoid it. Melee, you can typically just run through the boss now and you should be able to avoid the breath tick. Ranged, you could also potentially do that if you have things like blinks and speed increases. But ultimately, if you have to move left or right, it doesn't matter. You just need to make sure you avoid it. And each time this breath does come in, we just make sure that the entire raid moves around to a new section. And you repeat this with the second breath when it comes in, you move into the last section. And if you've done it correctly, you'll now notice that this last section should be completely clear of the puddles. There shouldn't be any on the ground. And it is exceptionally important that you do this in preparation for phase two. Now, phase two itself is a really, really short phase. It only lasts 20 seconds. And all that happens is that Nythendra just has a little sleep on the floor. She's kind of tuckered out and she doesn't really do any of her abilities. However, she'll just do a really long channel called Heart of the Swarm. During these 20 seconds, two very important things will happen. One, all of the infested ground patches from around the sides of the room, so from the rot, the volatile rot, and the infested breath, will now start traveling towards her. 
So this is why it was so important that you made sure that you had like a large area of the room clear of space so you don't have to be constantly dancing around all these patches flying towards the boss because they do deal a large amount of damage if you are caught out. On top of this, there'll be several of these little bugs on the ground and what they'll do is that they'll swell up very quickly and start dealing a ton of AoE damage to anyone nearby. And the thing is, if you get hit by one of these, it will increase the amount of damage you take from the next bug explosion by quite a lot. So the idea is dance you've got this large area for a reason you just want to be running around and being nowhere near the bugs now these bugs can be relatively difficult to see sometimes especially with a lot of spell effects going on so nine times out of ten it's normally worth just completely focusing on the floor if you're not doing that much damage who cares you will do more damage if you stay alive so just run around like a nutcase don't get hit by the bugs and don't get hit by the infested grounds that are running in towards the boss now, after these 20 seconds are over and all of the patches have been soaked in under the boss, you also notice that on Heroic, your infested sacks would have been completely removed, which is quite nice. And then the fight just repeats from there. And you want to follow the exact same strategy of using like the two thirds of the room. You start in one third, get it covered in shit. Then the breath comes in, move to the other third, get it covered in shit and the breath comes in. And you just keep going round and round like that until either the boss enrages or she dies. So thank you very much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this guide or if it helped you out at all, then please do drop us down a like. It helps us out so, so much. And before we let you go, do check out our sponsor Discord. Discord allows you to make your own voice comm server with text channels as well as audio channels completely for free. So you don't need to pay for any TeamSpeak servers or Ventrilo servers. We have our own server with voice and text channels where you guys can discuss bosses or anything you like. We have our own little community there. If you wish to join it, you're more than welcome to do so. The link is in the description. And a massive shout out to all of our supporters over on Patreon. We appreciate the continued support. And guys, we shall see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.